I had my friend Harry Pelos, uh, who I said, Harry, you've got 15 minutes to take us inside the world of what it's like to be a developer. Just tell us what it's like. What do you guys have to think about? How, how is it in the world of a developer? Harry being a very reputable developer in Western North Carolina, and he even cleans up really nice. Yeah. Too, right? <laughs> Harry Pelos. Harry And now I see the crowd. I go left to that way. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm going to step back for just one minute. That'll explain a little bit about why I'm here. I grew up in Raleigh, native North Carolinian, and uh, back then I used to backpack when I was skinny. And uh, whenever I had a heartbroken or some tragedy in the 70s that uh, affected my my life, I always came to the mountains, Western North Carolina, as a healing place, and just spent time in the woods and fished and blah blah blah. Pursued a career, uh, real estate investments. I was on the bad side <laughs> for about 15 years, and we were very, very bad and very good at it, uh, all up and down the East Coast, and uh, got a little frustrated with it. Came up here, uh, some girl asked me, what's a guy like you doing in downtown Asheville in 1998? And the word that came out of my mouth was penance. <laughs> I thought I'd come back to heal. <laughs> But that was an epiphany for me. Uh, so since then, uh, what we tried to do, is, and I, what I'm going to try to explain to you, is the, the realities of, of finance and development and the, me the mechanics of it all. Um, th that doesn't necessarily have to, it, it, you know, I've been blessed with the fact that my projects have worked. We weathered the storm. Um, we, we did quite a bit of uh, sizable stuff. Part of the role of a developer first and foremost, is to bring capital into a market. So economic development and real estate development, they're hand in hand, uh, first and foremost. What you've got to have is demand. And, and what we haven't had in the, in the marketplace here in the last four or five years is there hasn't been sufficient demand. It's been oversupply. So all these guys, some went to jail. 90%, <laughs> uh, uh, I was told 97% are gone. Okay, so there's three percent of us left, and <laughs> the other two percent are like billionaires. So <laughs> there's just a few of us, and and I think the reason that our stuff worked, and I think the role of a developer in Western North Carolina does have some sensibilities to the natural environment, and the culture, and the history, which is important to me as well. It, it, we've got to make the numbers work, and you got to have the market. I'm not going to speak specifically to anybody's project because they're all like children to us. As developers, these are our babies. And if, to say something about another guy's deal, you know, it's like calling his newborn ugly. You know, you just don't do it. Can't. So non-site specific. I think the challenge for Western North Carolina, uh, lesser in the city of Asheville, certainly not in, in downtown Asheville. It's booming. It's over $2 million an acre, by the way, is the trading price for property in downtown Asheville. Asking three. <laughs> so, but that, that's reflective of a trend. It's a macro trend, um, and that is there's a, the paradigm has changed. People want to go urban, okay? The rural ticky-tacky. Um, mountainside houses, second homes, golf course communities are on their way out, uh, and they're way they're halfway gone already. Um, so I don't think that what we've seen in the early 2000s is a trend that's going to come back now that the the financial meltdown has has kind of dissipated and we're kind of back on track for some economic growth. I don't see it happening that way at all. I think what's going to happen is is you're going to have the serving core, the millenniums want to be where the action is and frankly the aging baby boomers who are still healthy and active want to be with the young people so there's a macro trend away from rural development so for people who don't want to see things change that should be great news uh, my background is 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 pretty good uh, lectured at duke on this in the 90s i was in the top five percent uh, earners in the investment banking uh, world back in the day and uh, before I came here and went native. Uh, but uh, the reality is the American economy is moving on. Wall Street still drives everything, even though they're not located in New York City anymore. The, the phrase is still there. And I see part of our role as being bringing capital 
to the community so you can update facilities, have new stores. The real issue is, from my perspective, is what do they look like, how do they blend in? And, and honestly, in my industry, that's not the top priority. When I leave places like this, I, and I live here, so that's a big difference. <laughs> okay. The guy sitting in New York could care less, or Ohio, or Atlanta, or Sarasota. To them, they just want to see a check. And those of you that have IRAs or in any kind of investment out there for your retirement, your money's circulating back around into guys like me. So I would suggest to you something that hasn't come along in a long time is look at investing local. You know, use the power of the pocketbook to create the community that you want. Because guys like me got to go through strict protocol, and I'll give you a little taste of that. But it all comes back to bowing to the gods, the golden rule. The banks, <laughs> they're the ones with the, with the money. And finding market demand in Western North Carolina um, is going to be the trick. Rural development, ah, very niche specific. And I think some of the interesting things that I've learned here today, incorporating those things, may create little communities that are, that's attractive to. But the track development, second home, three, 4,000 square feet, blah, 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 ticky-tacky on the side of the mountain, it, it, that's gone. The young people want to be in an urban environment with support services. They want to drive less. Uh, so I think it's a great future for Western North Carolina. <laughs> you know, uh, the woods I've come to to heal for 40 years, I think uh, have a very bright future, and nature has a way of rebounding. Now, as far as what do developers do? I think we should, uh, what I do, and I think good developers do, is study the market, okay, and find the demand. You know, it could be a grocery store, it could be apartments, it could be condos. I mean, there's a plethora of products out there we can create. But you've got to identify a real demand. You've got to have it substantiated by third parties. Um, frankly, we go at risk. Um, I'm probably the poorest developer that survived the, <laughs> the uh, meltdown because it's $250,000 to $500,000. We front, up front. I got an idea. Well, we literally put our money where our mouth is to have our hypothesis substantiated by third parties. It's real money, and it's cash, no credit. Uh, to get it to the point that you can bring in investors and safely present an investment package and or be considered for a bank loan. So it's a real deal. Um, and I think guys that do their homework first um, and then go through spending that kind of money on the front end to support the hypothesis, uh, you know, generally it turns out pretty good. Um, having said that, um, so there's a capital issue going into the deal. The second thing is I'm in the throes literally running back and forth with emails and texts on financing a project down at the River District with national banks. It's $54 million, a huge number. And, you know, they just don't write a check. It, I could fill this area this tall with the documentation we have to substantiate the hypothesis. And that's a half a million dollars in paperwork. Um, it looks like that one will go through. Finding market demand is first and foremost. Second, I think design sensibilities to the local environment, community, look, arts and crafts in Asheville, that architecture is everywhere, but that's part of the tradition. Um, I did an arts and crafts community and people loved it. Um, and I think in doing so, we were honoring the, the pre-World uh, War II Asheville community that was built that way. Let's go, the next thing is um, research, the capital it takes to get all that research done, and then planning the product. Um, again, demand-driven product. And, and that's, then we go to the architects and the engineers and the soil guys and the retain guy, uh, wall guys here in Western North Carolina, and uh, we design a product that we believe will fit that market demand. The next step is getting it costed out and making sure that the target market that has the demand can afford the product. And it's very, very challenging. I think uh, everybody here that's either a renter or a homeowner is going to be stunned in the next five to seven years.
to see how much inflation has occurred in the construction industry when it's been dormant. You know, we really haven't been building for five years, except for metropolitan areas. And when building does come back, and it will to some varying degree, it's going to be expensive, folks. It's unbelievable. Um, we've seen cost increases on one project we've been working on in the last 14 months. It's over 10% increase in prices for materials. So, and that's going to get passed on to the homeowner, the tenant, et cetera, et cetera. Financing's no joke um, in the United States right now. Uh, anybody who's tried to get a home loan lately in the last couple of years, uh, it's, a, it's a real tough proposition. Um, a, you gotta have a lot of money, because uh, they're not, what we call leverage is, is how much loan can we get. And uh, whenever the leverage starts getting over 80% and into the 90%, it's like we were saying before the boom, uh, before the bust, you know there's going to be a bust. That's a capital-driven market. What you want is a demand-driven market. And the nice thing about Asheville, Buncombe County, Hendersonville, is we've had about 3,000 people move into the area every year since the mid-90s. The fact of the matter is it really hasn't done this. Construction and new developments have gone up. But the demand's been pretty consistent for almost 20 years. Um, my job, I think, and any good developer, is finding out what those people, new people, want to have in the way of home, home ownership or support services or places to shop and what do they want to look, what, what do they want it to look like. And then, hey, you know, how nice can we make it and how do we fit into the community? It's, it's a pretty tough uh, business. And in the last five years, you know, obviously with 95% of uh, your peers get uh, shot down in the business, you think uh, the old buggy whip, the last guy to make buggy whips. <laughs> you know, who needs a buggy whip anymore? <laughs> but uh, as long as you guys are making babies, growing, and we have a, 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 a mobile society, the fact is development's gonna occur, period. And when you got a beautiful place like Western North Carolina, people are gonna wanna be there. So how do we create products that don't offend the sensibilities of, of the history and tradition of the region, the, the natural environment, maintain that beauty as much as we can, and still provide, you know, in my case, housing and maybe some stores and support services. That's what we do, and it's, it's about a year to 24 months of planning. When you guys see uh, earth moving equipment and contractors out on the site, somebody's been on the job for 12 to 24 months. And 80% of our work as developers is done when the contractor kind of takes it over. <laughs> you know, we're 80% done. Uh, we need to monitor their progress, administer the project, get it completed, approve it, and then go out and market the final product. But the planning um, and the money being spent is all done on the front end before the bulldozers even get there. Um, and, and it's not an easy task. And I think managing the sensibilities of community for me, anyway, it's been a blessing because that's where our niche is. You know, downtown in the 90s needed historic restoration. They needed more nightlife, blah, blah, blah. Boom, we went in and filled that need. It's beyond anything I ever thought it would become. We went out to Highway 74, John's backyard. I put in a mixed-use development there when the road opened. We anticipated people wanting to be out on 74 once you could finally drive down it. And a uh, very successful project. I think John and everybody in the neighborhood was pleased with the addition. Uh, those are tax dollars. Those are good neighbors. Um, so that's just part of it. As long as we've got a growing population and people are mobile, they are going to be guys like me doing what we do. Um, I think rural development is going to be very, very tricky from my side of the table. Good news for you guys. I just don't see the demand uh, and the absorption. It's all about finance. If you got 200 lots, you're selling them for 100 grand, you borrowed 50 grand a lot to get there, and it takes 10 years to sell them out, the interest is, is taking all your profit away. So why bother? You know, you're going to have condensed absorption. 
And if demand's not there, you will not succeed. The project will be there, and there are roads all over Western North Carolina that are just growing kudzu with lots that never sold. It, it's a real shame. But um, that's what developers do. That's what I do. Anybody got any questions? <laughs> How about that? Okay. <laughs>